Indeed. Welcome back to Good Morning Kenya. My name is Mike Megui and today we are talking matters agriculture. You know, uh, Madraka Day is coming up and it's themed agriculture and food security. It's happening this Saturday and to help me with this conversation in studio I'm joined by Principal Secretary in the Ministry or State Department for Livestock in the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock, Honorable Jonathan Mweke. Karibu sana. Asante sana Mike. How is your morning coming along? My morning is great. Yes. Especially after yesterday Kenya in the sports you saw. Uh, oh yeah. Diana Chebet, Beatrice Chebet, yes. who won the 10,000 meters, yes. broke a world record. Yes. First woman to run under 29 uh, seconds. Yes. And Daniel also won the men's race, yeah. uh, though not many people are talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, my friend Ferdinand Omanyala <laughs> came a close second <laughs> yes. in the 100 meters. So yeah. Kenya was really on top of the world. Yeah. And that has made my morning very, very good. That is our pride. Yes, yes it is. Well, let's get into it right now. And... Um, as agriculture is one of the things that are captured in the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, and according to a report that was released last week by the Kenya National Bureau of uh, Statistics, agriculture played a big role in the economic growth of the country. What do you think about that? Uh, we weren't surprised mm -hmm. uh, because the bottom-up e economic transformation agenda was very well thought out. Mm -hmm. It was deliberate to mm -hmm. bring this kind of results. Yeah. Uh, you will note uh, before the Kenya Kwanza government came in, mm -hmm. agriculture was growing at minus 2.3%. Uh, and last year, after the very deliberate interventions mm -hmm. of uh, policies of our president, mm -hmm. then we came up to almost 7.9%. Mm -hmm. uh, this is because if you look at our priority value chains in the economic transformation agenda, out of the nine of them, six of them are agriculture. You know, we have tea, we have rice, we have leather, we have dairy, we have cotton, we have edible oils. Um, and it was very deliberate just to pick those value chains as they were a low-hanging fruit for rapid economic development, mm -hmm. targeting the very bottom of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. uh, so we picked the value chains, put together some interventions, mm -hmm such as uh, identifying where our farmers are. So mm -hmm. we did farmer registration. Almost 6.9 million farmers now are registered from just about, I think there were 400,000 before then. Mm -hmm. So now we know who our farmers are, where they are, the amount of land they have, mm -hmm. what are they farming, and that data just gives government uh, a lot of insights to make good decisions. Mm -hmm that will now spur economic growth. Mm -hmm. So what we saw in the economic survey 2023, that Kenya's economy has stabilized, is on an upward trend, and is driven or powered by agriculture, was a very, very deliberate result mm -hmm. of the interventions made by the Kenya Kwanza government. Yes. It also indicated that um, there was a significant uh, growth in terms of uh, market dynamics, where, especially when it comes to maize, um, potatoes, and cabbages. Are we seeing a case where agriculture now is resurging? Yes, absolutely. Um, you see, again, just talking about the economic transformation agenda, uh -huh. when you're looking at value chains, uh, you really are looking at production, then throughout aggregation, value addition, and then market linkage. Mm -hmm. So what this government did different was they began looking at the value chain from the back, from the end. What does the market want? Mm -hmm. In what quantities? With what quality? Mm -hmm. So once you're able to look at the route to market and the market linkages, then you can work backwards to production. Mm -hmm. So now you're able to tell the farmer, listen, the market requires this product mm -hmm. with this kind of quality, in these quantities, and consistently. Mm -hmm. Then you enable the farmer to produce what the market demands. Mm -hmm. And that's what creates the economic... Uh, the economic transformation yes uh, and that's why you're seeing now agriculture has really come back yes. with with the resurgence well we, we have experienced uh, above average rains and there were floods and one of the things that uh, areas that were affected was agriculture we saw some crops being destroyed what are we looking at in terms of food security owing to these floods well um, a big part of our docket, actually our main mandate, is food and nutrition security. Mm -hmm. That's why the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development exists. 
to ensure, number one, that we have enough food to feed our citizens. Mm -hmm. So that's food security. Uh, of course, nutrition as well, security to make sure that it's not just food, but nutritious food for the well-being of our people. And then secondary comes the trade aspect of it. Okay. Uh, with all the interventions we've made, uh, government has been set back a little bit by two shocks mm -hmm. in the recent year. Yes. The first one was the El Nino, yes. which of course caused for us a disaster. And government had now to reallocate money mm -hmm. from its uh, planned economic transformation agenda and mm -hmm. initiatives mm -hmm. to saving lives. And recently the floods have done the same. Uh, nearly three pe 300 people died, thousands displaced, property, infrastructure destroyed. And now government had to very quickly come together and pull money away from some of the economic agenda mm -hmm. and a transformation agenda to now save lives of our citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, for us in the agriculture sector, we were affected. A lot of crops were destroyed. Mm -hmm. We lost also quite some livestock. And uh, under the leadership of the deputy president, who's mm -hmm. been running the, the disaster response committee, a uh, steering committee that uh, myself and P.S. Rono and our minister sit on, uh, we have come up with a plan in uh, which we are now seeking budgetary approval just to help our farmers who are affected. Mm -hmm. So in the livestock sector, we are looking at uh, restocking of animals that could have been lost so that the economic activity around uh, livestock mm -hmm. out with our livestock keepers can continue. Mm -hmm. And with the farms that were destroyed, we are looking at just assisting our farmers with uh, some budgetary provision per acre of what was lost so that they can see if they can recover their crop. Mm -hmm. uh, that will not just lead to saving potential lost livelihoods from an economic standpoint of our farmers, uh, but also ensure that we are food secure. Yes. Yeah, so there's interventions uh, that have been made by government. Yes. And I'm sure any time now, cabinet is going to be able to approve those budgetary provisions yes. and we can go and give that aid to, to our people. Talk about now the aspect, uh, the general aspect of agriculture now in the whole context of a bottom-up uh, economic agenda. Well, uh, like I said, there's about nine value chains that we are tracking very closely, starting from uh, route to market. Mm -hmm. uh, just recently, uh, my minister, the Honorable Mithika Linturi, was in China looking for a market for, for coffee, and it came back with very positive results, which means with that, you will see uh, higher production of coffee, you'll see more money going to the pockets of our farmers uh, in terms of coffee, you'll see more value addition, mm -hmm. uh, people now processing coffee into finished products, which would be very good for us for export, mm -hmm. and also create very, very many jobs. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are doing throughout the specific uh, value chains. Uh, in my side, for example, uh, we have now just concluded what we are calling a route to market uh, study on the meat value chain. So as PS for livestock, I now know very clearly where is the demand for our meat around the, around the world, at what price should we be coming in so that we can be globally co competitive, mm -hmm. uh, what quality is needed, in what quantities, and when are those quantities needed. For example, in the Middle East, you'll find during Ramadan mm -hmm. or during Hajj, uh, or during Eid is when uh, the quality goes up, the quantities go up. They want almost double uh, our meat. Mm -hmm. So that helps us plan and we go back to the farmers and tell them, okay, you need to start breeding at this point so that by the time Rabanan hits, we have enough product mm -hmm. to send abroad. And that is what is transforming uh, our industry. Mm -hmm. And now based on really realizing what the market needs, we've come up with interventions as government in uh, breed improvement. So we are running what we are calling a national breed improvement program, mm -hmm. where we're going across the country to all livestock keepers and assisting them with good breeds through artificial insemination mm -hmm. so that we can up their production and productivity of their livestock. Mm -hmm. It gives them more kilos on their goats and sheep and cows, gives them better quality, makes their meat uh, reach maturity earlier, so instead of keeping a cow for four years before you sell it, now you can sell it at 18 months and it'll have achieved the growth rate or mm -hmm. the weight that is needed. Mm -hmm. And it just gives so much more money to the farmer much quicker and it serves the market. Mm -hmm. So doing these studies and looking at them 
scientifically and deliberately is very, very important for government for planning uh, reasons. Uh, we've made great, great strides in the dairy sector. You saw in the economic review, uh -huh. dairy was uh, found to be one of those value chains uh -huh. that have contributed to the tremendous growth we've seen in the agriculture value chain. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and with that, we also just did the same thing. We found out what the market needs, and they're looking at higher quality value items, so such as uh, yogurt and butter and ghee and chocolate. So now we've gone back to our farmers and we are telling them, listen, for us to be able to compete in this world where they want higher value dairy items, not just the white milk, uh, you need to produce dairy of this quality or milk of this quality mm -hmm. with this much butter content and this much protein in it. Uh, and our farmers have listened. So now we are moving from quantity based pricing where you're paid for the amount of milk you deliver to quality based pricing mm -hmm. so if your milk is at a certain quality then you get more money for it and the and aspect also of the diversification in terms of um, the products dairy products that yes. they are selling yes of course that's the value addition that we are talking to mm -hmm. so our processors have responded mm -hmm. and now they're getting more quality milk from uh, from the farmer that enables us now to now not just compete in the milk market with milk and milk powder, but now we can compete in the yogurt market and the butter market and the ice cream and chocolate market, which again leads to manufacturing, creates jobs, and gives us an opportunity for export, mm -hmm. which then uh, gives us foreign exchange mm -hmm. and it lowers our cost of living. Yes. So quite quite some interventions being made in in some of those sectors. The same is going on with edible oils. Mm -hmm. Uh, after fuel, Mike, edible oils is the second largest import. Yeah. Yeah, so we lose quite a lot of foreign exchange mm -hmm. bringing in edible oils. Mm -hmm. But through the interventions now of uh, sunflower and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and um, uh, 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 palm, palm trees that we are using now to plant, especially on the outskirts, the western side of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it is going on in Homer Bay and in Busia. Uh, we now can be able to make our own edible oils. Yes. So yeah. again, it creates jobs, mm -hmm. it lowers our cost of living because yes. we don't have to import it and it really creates very rapid economic growth uh, quite, quite quickly. Absolutely. We continue with this conversation in just a little bit. Don't go too far. Good morning, Kenya takes a short break.